False narratives are saturating the world at an alarming rate. Our culture is filled with idols. More and more students are becoming disillusioned, longing to fill a void. We must seek to address a number of narratives of our day. We must make an appeal to those who will listen. The living God has manifested His love through His Son, Jesus Christ. He is not hiding from you. We must return. Well, you talked about um, the scripture and biblical authority. Could you just try and simply define what biblical authority is? I think two responses come off the top of my head. One of them is from Psalms, and I do not know the exact reference off the top of my head, but the psalmist said, Psalm David said this, that God has um, exalted um, his word and his name above everything else. And so I would say that God and the Word of God go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. I, I would actually say they're inseparable. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I then go to Wayne Grudem's definition, which has just been easy for me to maintain in my mind. Wayne Grudem says that to obey Scripture, or to, to obey Scripture is to obey God, mm -hmm. or to disobey Scripture is to disobey God. Right. I think that is one of the simplest ways to think about the definition of biblical authority. So, knowing, knowing those things, a student can hear all those things, um, why do you think it would still be hard for them to rely on um, the biblical authority, God's authority? Well, I, it's a trust issue. Mm -hmm. I, I, again, my mind goes back to Genesis chapter 3, and I hope that what you see in me just answering these questions, I'm always trying to go back to the Bible mm -hmm. and demonstrate how my response to your question is rooted in Scripture. So I go back to Genesis chapter 3, and I see Satan asking a question to Adam and Eve, did God indeed say? And so what's Satan doing there? Satan is uh, trying to get man to seek wisdom or be on a quest for wisdom beyond God. Mm -hmm. Has God indeed said? Did God actually say? And so there is, there is a force at work that is attempting to usurp God's authority. And after Adam and Eve sort of think about that for a moment, they have a response, and Satan says to them, you shall not surely die. I think that that is the first place a false narrative enters into the world. Mm. And when that false narrative enters into the world, it's a false narrative that is contrary to God's Word. And so instantly, at the beginning of the history of creation and the history of man, humanity is left with two choices. You're either going to trust the Word of God, or you're not going to trust the Word of God and fall into the usurper's hmm. deception. Right. And so bottom line is it's hard for them to rely because of, of the problem of sin mm, yeah the problem of sin we have got to recognize that sin has brought death to our to a, our spirit yeah. and and if you are if a person is a non-believer they they have no power they have nothing outside themselves to understand what truth is and then if they are a believer, you've got two other roads. You're either carnal or you're spiritual. And so the struggle is, is, is real. It's real for me and it's real for you. It's not just um, something that the student experiences. Mom and dads experience it too. I, I take um, several mission trips throughout my life and some of them have been into what I would say hard places. And when I, when I mention, hey, you know, can a student go with me? Can a college student go with me? You instantly see the struggle of trust. <laughs> it's, just, it's a struggle. Yeah. So even, even in good things, even in things that we believe in, even if we believe that we are to take the gospel to the nations, we're to go to where people are unreached. Well, let me just tell you this. 
Right now, in the 21st century, the unreached people are in hard places. Because mm. nobody wants to go. And, right. I, and not that nobody wants to go. I sometimes think that part of the struggle is it's a trust issue. Yeah. Do I trust God? Yeah. You know, what happened? You know, those, so those issues are real, whether you're talking about missions or whether you're talking about what am I going to do at 11 o'clock at night when mom and dad are in bed hmm. and, and my boyfriend or girlfriend FaceTimes me and, and is asking for some inappropriate things. Yeah. Or, or they're in a bedroom and everybody else is asleep. Are you going to trust God in that situation? Hmm. Are you going to go with your feelings? Yeah, well, there, there you go. Um, we're doing something a little bit new with this, a little interactive. What we're going to do is if you have any specific question about biblical authority, about God's authority, um, or any question that you might have about anything else that's going on in your life, um, feel free to email Jason with those questions at jason at westacres.org. Um, and he's going to do his best to try and answer those and see if we can get them on air. We'll see you all next time.